Today I'm wearing this hat for a very specific reason. So I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time and that is to talk about, in my opinion, what is the ultimate fifth wheel towing truck. Now when I say ultimate, I mean I spent months tweaking and configuring the build sheet for my truck here, you know, going back and forth on different options and researching packages until I finally settled on this. I mean, when I say months, I'd obviously set it down and pick it back up. So it didn't literally take me months, but you know what I'm trying to say. So anyway, this is the first truck I've ever special ordered. In fact, it's the first car period I've ever special ordered in my life. You know, in the past, I've always just scoured the internet for cars or trucks that were close to my build preferences. And then I drive to whatever dealer had it in the end, even if it meant driving out of state or hopping on a plane. But this go round, as you know, with all the supply shortages, especially on trucks, I couldn't find anything even close to what I wanted. And you'll see here in a minute when I go over the build sheet, you know, just how the combination of options, it makes it a less common build, at least on dealer lots. All that to say, I highly recommend special ordering your next truck. You know, I think it's definitely worth the wait. In fact, after my experience, I think I'd definitely be up for special ordering really any vehicles personally. It's really neat in the end to be able to take delivery of a vehicle that is it's configured exactly the way you want it. You know, I mean, it was built just for you. You're not paying extra for features that you don't care for, and you're getting exactly what you want in the end. So definitely recommend special ordering. But in today's video, there are three things that I want to accomplish. First, I want to go over the build sheet on mine and explain why I ordered the specific options. And then second, I want to share why I skipped some of the other more popular options. And then third, I want to share the mistakes I've made in the past when buying trucks and share what I wish I had known then that I know now. So hang around to the end as I really want to make this video helpful for folks looking to tow, especially fifth wheel owners. So here's the full build sheet, and I'm just gonna quickly run down everything in order since it's all here. I actually printed out an enlarged copy to make it show up a little bit better on video. But you can see this is the 2021 Ram 3500. So I actually special ordered this in January of 2021. And then I took delivery in May of 2021. So it took a little over four months from start to finish. But you can see this is the 3500, the one ton version of the Ram. It's the Laramie trim, which back in the day used to be the top trim. And now you've got the Longhorn and the Limited above it. So this one's, you know, it's not quite the top trim, but you still get a lot of nice amenities with it. And you'll notice it is the crew cab. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's the four by four drivetrain. And then of course the full long box, the eight foot box. So you can see what the base price looks like there. And I'll just go through real quickly some of these standards and options that I went with here. So on the color, you can see I chose the granite crystal metallic, just kind of a nice neutral color. And then for the inside, I did the black leather. Now, this is one option that was really hard for me to find on any dealer lots, at least in the Laramie trim. And that is, you'll notice, I got a 40 20 40 bench seat and that is very rare to find on a laramie in fact most of them are all going to be bucket seats now sometimes when people hear bench seat on a modern truck it kind of scares them off because they're thinking about a truck from the 80s or 90s that literally had a bench running from door to door but here ram just uses the terminology bench seat it's not literally a bench in fact the chairs here for both the passenger and the driver are literally the same bucket seats that you get if you get the center flow through console the difference is Instead of having that center flow through console, you have this jump seat in the middle. So you actually can fit six passengers in the truck, three in the front here, three in the back. And I think this is super handy. There's been plenty of times where I've wanted to have six passengers, but I couldn't because I was limited to five. And so I really like the idea of having this center jump seat. Plus, you're really not giving up much. You still have all the console stores that you typically would have here on top. You've got your cup holders, of course, and then you also have more storage under the seat, plus all of this up here and then all this space that would have been taken up by the center flow console. So personally, I really like the bench seat option, you know, call me old school, but I really think this option is conducive to RVers, especially if they need seating for six people. Then the next big option is gonna be the engine, and this one's really a no-brainer if you're gonna be doing any heavy towing, and that is the 6.7 liter 
inline six cylinder Cummins high output turbo diesel engine. So this is the high output model, 1,075 foot pounds of torque and then 420 horsepower. And that comes bundled with the six speed automatic ISIN transmission, the AS69RC. So that's gonna be a heavier duty transmission compared to, I think it's made by ZF that you're gonna find in more of the three quarter tons that have the, the standard output Cummins there. So that's kind of a no brainer if you're gonna be doing any towing there. And then you can see all these standard options. This mostly is going to be bundled in with the Laramie. So if you're getting the Laramie, pretty much all this is going to come standard. So let's go over these options that I got here. You can see the paint added a little bit of cost there. But the first option is the towing technology group. So that's going to give you a center stop lamp with cargo view camera, the surround view camera system, the 360 camera, and then the trailer reverse guidance. So really nowadays, all these extra cameras are becoming more and more common on trucks but I do think they're really helpful especially in towing situations you know when you're backing up or negotiating a tight spot so this is the camera that's looking down over the bed and I've got my tonu cover rolled up but normally if I'm hitching up to my fifth wheel you'd have your fifth wheel hitch in the bed and I can use this dotted line then to help make sure my trajectory is lined up with the kingpin and as I turn the steering wheel then that dotted line is going to adjust so I can just basically marry that to the kingpin on the fifth wheel and that way I'm lined up with my fifth will hitch. So that makes it a little bit easier as opposed to, you know, kinking your neck and having to look through your rear view window. Then of course you also have cameras looking down the side of your truck, kind of like a mirror almost. So I've got a left and a right and you can actually pan over further to one side if you want. Maybe there's a pillar or something that you're trying to avoid and you want to make sure that you don't hit it. So that one's pretty handy. And then of course you've got your traditional if you're doing bumper pull towing so you can line up there and you can even, you know, zoom in to get a little bit closer there. So that's really handy. Then the 360 camera, this is really one of my favorites. This is especially helpful when you're unhitched and maybe you're you know navigating through a parking lot really gives you a nice kind of bird's eye view around everything and it it works pretty good stitching all the different angles together and then of course it shows you simultaneously kind of that rear backup view and then the other ones you've got kind of a wide angle and then you've got your front on the front of the truck there if there's something in front like a rock wall or something you want to make sure you don't hit you've got that as well and then kind of even a more narrow one there as well so that's organized very well, very easy to get to. Definitely recommend getting that. The other camera that I've really come to appreciate is up here on the rear view mirror. So this is one that they kind of just started putting in when I put my order in, so it wasn't real clear what this is. But you know, normally you've just got a conventional rear view mirror where you look out the back and you can see here, my view is almost completely blocked between the headrests and then a child seat back there. And so this is so nice because you get a completely unobstructed view. It took me all but maybe a couple days to get used to this because it is a little weird seeing a screen up here, you know, that's showing your video from the back uh, tailgate there. But I've really come to enjoy this. They have gotten the brightness, the contrast, exposure. They have gotten this, you know, almost perfect, I would say with all the different lighting situations, you know, sunny days, days where it's, you know, at dusk, things are getting darker, headlights shining into the camera. I mean, it really gives you an accurate view up here. So I've been really impressed with that. And if you don't like it for some reason, you can always just turn it off by flipping it down. So I really like that a lot. Plus, if you've got different drivers or you're adjusting your seat position, this always stays the same. And so I really like that as well. So definitely recommend getting all those extra cameras. Then the next option is gonna be the safety group. Group, and that's going to include the adaptive cruise control with stop plus the full speed forward collision warning plus and the buttons to control it are here on the right side of the steering wheel you've got a button to toggle it on and off and then another button to adjust the distance between you and the pace car in front of you but I really think this is a helpful feature for RVers you know when you think about your travel days and sometimes you're on the road for five six seven eight hours at a time it can be really fatiguing sometimes at least for me when you're constantly slowing down and speeding up you know slowing down down speeding up you're trying to keep that distance to a safe amount between you and the car in front of you especially with all that weight that you're towing so to be able to let the truck do that for you and keep that distance to a safe amount it really takes a lot of the fatigue out of the equation and I've been using this for almost a year now and I'll just say with towing you know I have a lot of confidence in the system as I've gotten accustomed to it it's very conservative it always leaves plenty of room between you and the car truck in 
front of you. So really recommend getting this feature. And then of course you also have the safety feature that if you're not paying attention, it's gonna try to mitigate a front end collision by bringing you to a full stop. The next option is the protection group and that adds a transfer case, a skid plate shield underneath. And you know, I'm not gonna be doing any off-roading in this Thule, but for only 95 bucks, might as well have a little more protection underneath there. Then the next option is the fifth wheel gooseneck towing prep group. And that's going to add that factory puck system in the rear of the bed so that you can put a goose ball or a fifth wheel hitch and use those puck mounts. Now I've got my bed rug covering everything up right now, but you've seen this before with the five holes recessed into your truck bed. You've got the goose ball in the middle, then the four outer ones for the fifth wheel hitch. And it's pretty common nowadays on trucks, but believe it or not, I have seen even dualies that are ordered at dealers on the lots without the puck system already integrated into the bed. And I mean, you can buy one of those trucks and then get an aftermarket like the BMW turnover ball system, but I really think this is a whole lot more robust having the four anchor points for your fifth wheel hitch and then that center goose ball. Then the next option is gonna be the bed utility group. That's gonna get you the deployable bed step. I think this is the first truck that I've ever bought that I didn't have to add that on from aftermarket. And then you also get the LED bed lighting and then the spray-in bed liner. All right, this next package is purely cosmetic. As much as I'd like to think that it helps me tow more in reality, it does nothing for me in that arena. In fact, it was a bit of a splurge at $24.95. But every other truck that I've owned before has been decked out in chrome. You know, chrome grill on the front, chrome bumpers, chrome door handles, everything chrome, chrome, chrome all the way around. And so I decided to do something a little different on this one. And basically the night edition replaces all the chrome on the truck, either with blacked out body parts or body parts that are painted to match your body color there. And it really looks sharp in my opinion. It's kind of a more monotone, you know, a little bit more understated look compared to having all that chrome on the truck. So I really like it so far, but like I said, this one was a bit of a splurge at $24.95. The next option is the Laramie Level 1 Equipment Group. And this was over a year ago that I did this build, but if my memory serves correctly, there were two different levels, a Level 1 and Level 2. And kind of a bundle, you can see of some different options that they're giving you all at once there. And if I remember right, the level two forced me to get some other options, some other upgrades that I didn't care for. And so that's why I stuck with just the Laramie level one equipment group right there. All right, and then the next option is the 410 axle ratio. So you definitely want that if you're gonna be towing anything. I mean, you wanna be able to do the max tow. And so you want that 410 axle ratio. And then of course I talked about the engine upgrade already. Now I opted for the 220 amp alternator. You can get dual alternators, but in my case, I really just couldn't see the need for that. And it just adds some more complexity. So I just did the single 220 amp alternator. The next option though is the flat cap cab length painted side steps. Now I've got long legs, I'm over six foot tall, so I don't have any issues getting in and out of the truck without these steps here, but it is still nice to have them for the rest of the family, you know, with the kids and everything getting in and out. And you know, a lot of times on these luxury trucks, they have these retractable kind of deployable steps that every time you open and close the doors, the steps come out. And that's nice and everything, they look sleek, but for me personally, that's one more thing to go broken. And I'd really rather have those steps be fixed and just out there all the time. You know, I'm not concerned about ground clearance. You still have plenty of it, by the way, but this is a dually, so I'm not gonna be doing any crazy off-roading in it. So I really prefer these fixed steps. They're really nice and wide. I mean, call me old school, but I really prefer these over the retractable ones. Plus, I think if you go up to the Laramie Level 2 package, if I recall, then you're pretty much forced to get those retractable steps instead of these fixed ones. All right, this next one is an absolute game changer, and that is the 50-gallon fuel tank. So I think the base tank is 32. So imagine having 50 gallons of diesel capacity. You know, you figure 10 miles per gallon is an average towing MPG, at least for me it is. So that's 500 miles of rain. So if you do the math, I mean, you can drive for over seven hours straight without having to fill up diesel. And really what that does is it takes a lot of stress out of travel days because, you know, sometimes you're looking for a truck stop or looking for a gas station where, you know, it can accommodate the large size of your truck and the fifth wheel and everything to fill up with diesel. But I mean, if you can go now for over seven hours and not have to fill up with diesel, I mean, that pretty much takes us through most travel days in our case. So we never have to worry about looking for a gas station. You know, we'll still make stops at rest areas and whatnot for bathroom and food.
food, but we never have to worry about filling up then. So definitely recommend doing that 50 gallon fuel tank. Then you can see the next option is an engine block heater. Now this one, you know, it's really better for cold climates where your truck is parked outside and you wanna warm it up. So you're not having to use the glow plugs as much when you start your engine in the mornings when it's cold. But I figure for, you know, 95 bucks to be able to have that already done on the truck, it's definitely worth it there. Then the next option is the automatic leveling rear air suspension. Now this one's kind of pricey at $1,705, but what I really like about this option is it's gonna automatically level out the rear of your truck, whether your fifth wheel's kingpin weight is 2,500 pounds, or is in my case, 4,400 pounds. And so it's gonna keep everything level in the back. It's seamless. You're not having to fidget with buttons or adjust settings, you know, like a lot of the aftermarket systems that you can install. So it just works. And here's a close up look of what it looks like underneath. So you can see you still have traditional leaf springs a pack of four of them but then you can see the air bladder there behind the shock and that's what deflates and inflates to adjust the load accordingly and i'd like to do a video or two in the future to kind of demonstrate what the air suspension actually does the difference it makes by putting a load on the back of the truck you know say over four thousand pounds and then deflate the air suspension to see how much the truck squats compared to when the air suspension is active and compare the difference between the two next option is going to be the tires and these are actually the same size as the standard tires the only difference here is these are on off-road tires and so the tread patterns going to be a little bit more aggressive. I mean, these are not mud tires, but they have a more aggressive tread pattern. And the reason I did this is a lot of times we'll be camping somewhere where maybe it's gravel, you know, loose gravel or loose ground, and you just need a little bit more traction, especially when you're trying to back something up and you've got loose ground beneath you. And so really having these on off road tires, I think it makes a big difference, makes it more useful, at least for camping when you're pulling a big fifth wheel in places where you're not on pavement. I have not noticed Notice these tires being any louder on the highway you know sometimes you think about a more aggressive tread pattern being louder I have not noticed a reduction in fuel economy at least one that's noticeable in my opinion so really I think this is the way to go on the tires get the on off-road tread pattern next option is one that I think may surprise a lot of people and that is I went with the Uconnect 8.4 inch display instead of the more popular 12 inch display that you find a lot of times on the Laramie and the higher trim level trucks now let me give you the single biggest reason of why I opted for the 8.4 inch display over the 12 and that is if you're like me and you use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay you know primarily for maps and navigation while you're on the road and music too of course but if you do the 12 inch screen you're not really getting any more screen real estate here because it's just going to be one kind of stack screen on top of another it doesn't fill the entire height of that 12 inch display and so basically you end up with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on the top here and then another maybe a set screen or an HVAC screen down below so you're not gaining any more screen real estate and I'm primarily using it you know with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay so that was the main reason and you know I'd much rather than have physical buttons below here as opposed to a virtual screen for all that you know when you're driving especially when you're towing and everything sometimes it's just hard to operate a touchscreen so for me personally I'd much rather have all these physical buttons down here below that you get with the 8.4 inch display as opposed to having that nice 12 inch display I mean it looks really nice but from a functionality standpoint you know this 8.4 is tried and tested and proven and so I really prefer it plus you save a little bit of money in the end all right and last two options the dual rear wheel so that's kind of a given if you're towing a heavy fifth wheel and you need that payload capacity which by the way if you're curious on this specific configuration on mine it's 5,095 pounds so pretty decent there and then last option I did was the trailer tire pressure monitoring system I highly recommend this I did a separate video demonstrating it but it basically lets you view the tire pressure of the tires on your fifth wheel in your center cluster display just like you can see the tire pressure on the tires on your truck and so when you get this option here for 445 they're gonna send you four TPMS sensors not screw on ones like aftermarket but they actually go inside the tire just like the ones that are on the truck already 
And then there's a receiver, I believe, in the back somewhere along the chassis that reads in the TPMS sensors on your fifth wheel inside and then displays them, like I said, up in the center cluster there. So I'll throw a picture up of what that looks like. It's super handy, and that way you've got one less display, you know, cluttering up your dashboard, and it just works. It's always done for you. Okay, so that's all the options. You can see the total price came to $83,240 with the destination charge added in there. Now, you might be thinking that's kind of expensive, but, you know, a lot of trucks like this one can end up being well north of 90 with options and everything factored in. So for me, you know, this is a purpose-built truck. I really wanted it to be the ultimate towing machine for a fifth wheel, and so I was happy with where that number came out. And for those curious, I ended up paying just under invoice with the dealer that I ordered it through. Now, let me mention some of the configurations and options that I skipped and why. And the first is the Mega Cab plus the short bed combo. Now, for me personally, knowing that I want plenty of clearance with your cab, you know, and your fifth wheel nose during turns, I really prefer the full eight foot bed. I mean, I've towed a previous fifth wheel with a short bed truck and it works, you can do it, but I just remember always being nervous when making tighter turns and always having to watch that cab clearance with the fifth wheel. So it's really just one more thing that you've got to worry about. Plus, I really personally like the functionality of having that full eight foot bed in terms of hauling lumber or you know, four wheeler, you name it. That extra length is really just more functional. And you know, for me, the crew cab, at least in the Ram, it's plenty big and roomy in my opinion. So for me, the mega cab really doesn't have much appeal, uh, especially since you lose that eight foot bed. Second is the instrument mounted auxiliary switches. So I skip those mainly as I like these toggle switches that you get instead. You know, if you do the auxiliary switches, then all these become push buttons. You basically have just two rows here of push buttons. And for me, really, I like the toggle buttons. They're a lot easier to use. You know, the aux switches, they're kind of fun if you want to add an air horn or an off-road light or something outside but for me since I'm not doing any of that again I just skip that option in favor of keeping these toggle switches third option I skipped was the trailer camera wiring so this option sounds pretty cool initially you know being able to have an integrated camera on the back of your fifth wheel and then have it show up in the dash so then you don't have to have an extra Furion display cluttering up your dash but this option I think is a bit too new and kind of in its infancy stages still. So as I read through owner forms, people that had actually tried it, it sounded like there's all sorts of issues with the length of the wires that they give you from the factory, you know, meaning it is a hardwired camera, it's not wireless. And then really just overall a lot of complaints with the quality and the resolution. So in the end, I mean, you just end up with the ability to see that camera on the back, that wired camera in the 8.4 inch screen, but it's just like your backup camera. It's not an always on thing like the, uh, the Furion observation camera. You know, if Ram develops a partnership with Furion and is able to get the Furion observation camera to show up here on the rear view mirror while you're towing, now that I'd pay for in a heartbeat. But for now, I think this is an option to skip. Another option I skipped was the Harman Kardon audio system, which I think has some 17 plus speakers. And for me, you know, I've owned several Ram trucks with the upgraded Alpine system with the subwoofer. I think it's about nine speakers, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, this system actually used to be the top of the line sound system, the Alpine one years back. But for the upgrade cost, I think it was about $1,000 more for the Harman Kardon version. It just wasn't worth it to me, you know, especially when the Alpine system already sounds great. So that'll save you at least a thousand bucks without really sacrificing anything. And I skipped this sunroof. Now I get this is a personal decision. I like sunroofs in cars, but in a big dually truck, I just don't care for a sunroof. And really that's just one more thing in terms of weight to take away from your payload. And again, it's probably gonna save you about a thousand bucks. And last one, this one's kind of small, but I would skip the Mopar rubber floor mats. I think they're about 150 bucks or so. And I really like these WeatherTech ones instead here that are molded. They really offer a whole lot more protection. I mean, I think they really nailed it in the way that they designed and fitted their mats. So I definitely forgo the Mopar ones and take that money and get the WeatherTech ones instead. All right, so last thing I wanna talk about are the mistakes I made in the past on trucks. Or in other words, what I wish I had known then that I've come to understand now. And I hope these will save you money. At least it would have in my case for me. 
And you know, a lot of it has to do with understanding the payload capacity in relation to towing. You know, it's one of those things that both really car dealers and RV dealers, they don't spend a lot of time talking about. You know, they tend to focus more just on the big towing numbers, which can be a little bit misleading. You know, plus RV manufacturers, they post pin weights on models based on units without any options, you know, added to an RV. And that includes factory or aftermarket options for that matter. And then you add all your personal belongings, you know, your pin weight, it may go up some 35% as in the case of my Jayco Pinnacle back here. So all that to say, here are my recommendations based on how much you plan to tow. And I'm gonna break these up by weights, but there's gonna be some overlap. And then this of course applies to all the brands. So up to 7,000 pounds, such as a travel trailer, then a half ton gas or truck, really any bed size all day long. Then if you're gonna to be towing 6,000 to 14,000 pounds, that could be a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, then I'd recommend a three quarter ton gasser. And that could be a short or long bed truck again. Then if you're gonna to be towing 10,000 to 15,000 pounds, that's probably gonna be a fifth wheel more than likely. Then I'm gonna recommend a one ton single rear wheel diesel. And again, that could be a short or long bed truck, depending on your preference. However, if you're towing 14,000 pounds or more, that's when I would recommend only a one ton dually and do the long bed with the high output diesel. So you're probably noticing there's a very popular class of truck and engine combination that is completely missing from my recommendations and that is a three quarter ton diesel truck you know these are extremely popular on dealer lots or at least they were before the pandemic but in my opinion if you plan to do any towing whatsoever you should absolutely skip the three quarter ton diesel and instead go straight to the one ton single rear wheel diesel. I mean, I really don't see the practical use for the three quarter ton diesel trucks, especially if you're gonna to be towing regularly. I think they're a complete waste really, and that's my subjective opinion. And the reason is the payload on the three quarter ton diesels is severely limited, especially on the trucks that are configured with options. I mean, typically you're gonna be left with a payload in the 2,000 to 2,500 pound range due to the extra weight of that diesel engine, which again is really a waste in my opinion as you can't tow much with it in the end since you end up running out of payload. So the only time I think a three quarter ton truck makes sense is if you're looking at a gasser as then typically your payload will be north of 3,000 pounds, maybe even 3,500 pounds. And again, that all has to do with the weight difference between a gas engine versus a diesel engine. In fact, if you're on the fence between a half ton and three quarter ton gasser, I would absolutely do the three quarter ton gasser all day long. I mean, I think that is a super practical truck. It's very useful for a lot of situations. All right, so again, if you're gonna get the diesel truck, I would say go straight to the one ton. And you don't necessarily need to get a dually like I've got here. I mean, most brands offer a one ton truck in a single rear wheel configuration, even with a short bed if you want. But you're gonna get vastly more payload capacity in a one ton truck, even with single rear wheels, compared to that same truck in a three quarter ton model. So definitely recommend doing the one ton truck regardless regardless if you're looking to go diesel. And then of course, if you're towing heavy over 14,000 pounds, then I really think that's where it makes sense to get the dually. You know, then you've got the extra stability with the width in the back and the payload numbers, which are typically gonna be in the 5,000 pound plus neighborhood by the time you factor in all the options. So if you've got a big fifth wheel, you know, over 14,000 pounds, then a dually is definitely the way to go. Well, I hope that information is helpful. Remember, it's just my opinions in the end, but if I had known what I know today, perhaps say 10 years ago, then I probably would have owned two to three fewer trucks and saved myself all the time and expense of switching from truck to truck and upgrading. So just something to consider. But I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Well, definitely let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.